<laughs> Today on Rescue Vet, alarming symptoms prompt an owner to take her dog to the emergency clinic. If the prognosis is cancer, euthanasia may be the only choice. There could be some liver cancer. If that's the case, we're probably just going to let the surgery not resuscitate. A Pekingese loses her ability to walk. Will surgery be the only way to prevent future paralysis? Or will a unique alternative treatment be enough to get her back on her feet? That's a big surgery, has a lot of risks with paralysis. It's another busy Monday at Veterinary Specialty Care. And today, Shelly Snyder has brought in her dog, Ellie. Over the weekend, Ellie began to exhibit abnormal behavior, followed by some alarming symptoms. At this point, her prognosis is unknown. This weekend, she started vomiting and then was just sort of hiding under the bushes. And when I tried to call her and coax her into the house, she was just having trouble walking. So I brought her to the emergency vet clinic. They did an ultrasound this morning and said that it looks like there's some gallbladder, possibly some liver damage or failure because she's having some yellowish tinning in her ears and eyes. There could be some liver cancer. If that's the case, we're probably just going to let the surgery not, not resuscitate um, since she'll already be asleep. I just don't want to have to put her through the cancer treatment for um, her at her age. I'm just hoping that, that it is just something that she's eating or the gallbladder's just acting up. So, so we'll just see. She's my baby. <laughs> All Creatures Veterinary Clinic, located in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, not only specializes in dogs and cats, but also extends its care to all kinds of exotic animals. Dr. Berger has had experience treating animals from around the world, including hedgehogs, cotamundis, and emus, just to name a few. Today, Amber Bradley has brought in her nine-year-old Pekingese, Sassy, for an appointment with Dr. Berger. Sassy has been experiencing severe back pain and can barely walk. We noticed that she didn't want to walk anymore. She wasn't happy. She didn't really want to play. And so we came and he checked her out. And so this time he's going to x-ray her. And we'll see what's wrong. And hopefully we won't have to do surgery. She's a little baby. Sassy came in because she was wobbling on her back end. So basically her back end was not listening to her front end. Before Dr. Berger examines Sassy, the veterinary technicians administer her annual vaccinations. Sassy is then taken to radiology for spinal radiographs in order to determine the source of her neurological issues. Dr. Berger is reviewing Sassy's x-ray results and has to decide if surgery is necessary to fix the back pain and weakness in her hind legs. This dog has got chronic neurologic signs in its hind end and we're looking for discs that have been are causing a spinal issue. What you can see here is a disc that's mineralized. It's probably putting a little pressure on the spinal cord there. We're using steroids right now to treat it to keep the inflammation out of the spine. The disc comes up, hits the spinal cord, and actually can rupture with such force that it can sever the spinal cord. So that's what we're trying to prevent with the steroids. Although steroids have helped decrease the inflammation in Sassy's spine, the problem has not yet been resolved. So we're just going to look at her neurologic reflexes. Mm -hmm. And what you can see this is called a test of conscious proprioception. Does she know where her foot is in space and time? You can see how that's delayed on the left side. The right side, flip it, comes right back. Left side, a little bit of a delay. So what that means is there's 
a disc problem or something wrong with the spine somewhere between her brain, which is sensing where her foot is, and her motor part of her nervous system telling her how to flip it over. So the x-rays show that she's got a pretty significant disc right here. So those are calcified discs that are pushing on the spine. Yeah. So we've been treating her with steroids, which kind of cool the whole process down, but don't really solve the problem. Yeah. You know, we really have two options. We can do some acupuncture on her, or possibly have surgery to fix that. Okay. Um, you know, obviously acupuncture is a lot less invasive yeah. <laughs> and a lot cheaper, yeah. um, and something we'd like to try first before we do, you know, referral for surgery. Because surgery is very expensive and risky for older dogs, Amber decides to try acupuncture first. The owners did not want to do surgery. That's a big surgery, has a lot of risks with paralysis. With the acupuncture treatment, it's less invasive. It's easier for the dog treating the whole body. What we'll do is we're gonna get a little blanket for her and I'll get some needles and we'll do that today, okay? okay. So I'll be right back. So we took some radiographs and we saw that she has intervertebral disc disease in her neck and in her lower spine. So a dog like that is usually managed with steroids to decrease the inflammation. We chose to not use the steroids because of the side effects and because she's been on steroids before and it didn't help. Acupuncture's goal is to basically relieve the obstructions in the nervous system so that it can heal itself. Dr. Berger carefully inserts the acupuncture needles to help alleviate the pain and inflammation associated with ruptured discs. So they go all the way in. They're not really treating the spinal cord per se. This is what we call the feel-good needles. Okay. So these are the ones that release the nice endorphins and make you feel a lot better. How long will the effect last? It should last for two to three weeks. That's what our hope is. We'll see how she does. Acupuncture will also stimulate the body's healing process and Sassy's overall well-being. That's for good TV reception there. Mm -hmm. You're being very brave. Two more. Although acupuncture may appear painful, the needles are helping Sassy relax. Is there anything that we can do at home to help? Well, I think you're already doing most everything you can. You know, limiting her exercise off leash, um, trying to keep her from jumping. Yeah, that's she doesn't the, jump at all anymore. Yeah, that's the big thing. Dr. Berger also suggests that Amber buys a kiddie pool for Sassy to swim in. Aquatic exercise will increase her back muscle strength, improving her neurological skills. Okay, so that's it for now. We're going to leave those in for about 15 minutes. Okay. And hopefully she'll calmly go to sleep. We'll probably it all... seems very calm. Yeah, you'll find it after this she'll sleep all night long. So I'm going to let you stay here and we're going to leave the room so that she can relax. Okay. okay? okay. To determine if Ellie has an infection or cancer, surgery is necessary. There's a chance that she might be put down on the table. If they think that it's a cancer of some kind or that there's any kind of spread, then we won't be waking her up from the procedure. I'm trusting the doctor, using his untrained eye just to sort of see how the liver looks and if it looks sort of healthy, then to just proceed on with the um, normal surgery and probably remove the gallbladder. If the liver does look extremely damaged, um, then they'll probably just not let her come out of the anesthesia. The doctor told me I could come back over here and sit and wait. You know, I'd rather do that if he doesn't bring her back out, then at least I can go and tell her goodbye before they unhook her and everything. But if it's the best case scenario, then, you know, they'll keep her for a couple of days and then I'll be able to take her home. So that's what we're hoping for. An innovation tube is placed down Ellie's trachea so the gas anesthesia can be administered. We lubricate their eyes because once they're under anesthesia, they tend not to blink and their eyes stay open and it prevents their eyes from drying out. When we prep them for surgery, we um, shave down as close to the skin as we possibly can because hair tends to hold the germs and anything like that. So the closer it is to the skin, the less chance of getting any kind of bacteria or anything into the incision. Typically, three veterinary technicians are needed during surgery. 
one technician who administers anesthesia and monitors the patient's vital signs, one as a facilitator, and one as a scrub tech who assists in the procedure and keeps the instrument table organized. Dr. Bianucci begins surgery by carefully opening Ellie's abdomen. He quickly discovers something he has never seen before. Oh my, now that is a gallbladder. That is the gallbladder that ate Cleveland. That is the hardest gallbladder I think I've ever felt. It's the wrong color and way the wrong size. Dr. Bianucci has discovered that Ellie has a severe gallbladder infection. Her gallbladder is one of the largest he has ever seen. We've got a really hard, overly distended gallbladder, so we need to take it out. Because of the size and appearance of Ellie's gallbladder, Dr. Bianucci must immediately remove it to prevent further infection and potential rupturing. All right, well, I think we just gotta go for it because I can't tell you if it's cancer or not. I'm not gonna put the dog to sleep based on that. Dr. Bianucci cannot immediately define the prognosis, so he chooses not to euthanize Ellie. You know, the owner doesn't want to move forward if it's cancer, which is understandable because cancer in this area is not going to be a good, you know, good outcome. Um, but the problem is making that call. There's financial concerns, so there's always a worry, you know, that you're going to spend a lot of money on a, on a case that's not going to have the best outcome. Although he is concerned about what caused the infection to begin with, it is hard to decipher whether or not it is cancer since the gallbladder is inflamed. You know, most of the time when I walk out of surgery, I know or have a very strong impression about what I saw, you know, whether it was cancer or whether it was an infection. You don't always know, but you know, in a case like this, sometimes you just can't you just can't walk out of here saying you know and it's just it's always a little bothersome. After removing the gallbladder, Dr. Bianucci inspects the rest of Ellie's internal organs for other possible tumors or infections. Her liver, spleen, intestines, stomach, bladder, and kidneys all appear to be healthy. All right, we're gonna save that. Just in case things don't improve, we'll have something to check. A biopsy from the neck of Ellie's gallbladder is removed. It will be sent to a pathologist who will determine if the prognosis is an infection or a cancerous tumor. If this is just an infection, she should do great. Um, and I do suspect that that's what this is. It's just not 100% clear. With the biopsy on its way to the lab and the rest of Ellie's internal organs looking healthy, Dr. Bianucci decides to wake Ellie up from surgery. Once surgery is over, Ellie is taken to the ICU, where she will be monitored overnight by the 24-hour staff. Three months after the initial acupuncture, Sassy is back at All Creatures Veterinary Clinic for a follow-up exam to find out if she is still experiencing pain from the ruptured discs in her back. We were afraid that if we put her through surgery, it would just be too traumatic and she might not make it. So we wanted something to prolong her life as well as make her happy without possibly losing her or costing a extensive amount of money and her never be the same. To ascertain whether or not the acupuncture was effective, Dr. Berger examines her neurological behavior. And check her reflexes. Oh, well, that's much better. See so, yeah, how quick she lifts them back up? Yeah. Good girl, Sassy. Good girl. It's a little slow on the left, but good on the right. So with the acupuncture treatment, we've gotten full sensation back into the right rear leg and 80% sensation into the left rear leg. So that's a really remarkable change for the dog just from the acupuncture. What I think I'm going to do today is just basically give her final accurate bunch of treatment for about three months. Okay. We use a little bit of electricity. Okay. Which will seem weird. Yeah. And it'll feel weird to her because she's never had it. But basically that helps the acupuncture sink in. Good girl. Good girl. And then this final needle it does the kidney and the spleen because those are the points that when you have disc disease, excess moisture in the body. So we're trying to get rid of that moisture. 
Today we added electricity to the acupuncture. That unit that we use today just is a little alternating electric current and basically helps the acupuncture last a little bit longer so that she doesn't have to come in as often. The right side of reflexes are normal now, which is great because both sides were abnormal before. The left side is about 80% better. And I think we've accomplished our goal of trying to treat her conservatively with medicine and acupuncture rather than having to have a big, huge old back surgery that's going to be traumatic for her. Yeah. So did you get a swimming pool for her? We did. Okay. Yeah. It really does seem to help. It does, yeah. You have great owner compliance there. They told these owners, let's swim the dog. So they went to the store, they got a pool. The muscles on the back strengthen, support the spine. So hopefully we'll have success going on. That's all? That's all. Wow. Good girl, that okay. wasn't so bad. Good girl. So she's free to have free reign again, keep swimming her. Okay. And then we'll see you in three months for a recheck. Okay. Okay, baby girl. All right, no kisses today. That's okay. <laughs>
see somebody coming back in and we see the gradual changes in the animal and the owner's excitement for them getting better. I mean, it's, it's why we get out of bed in the morning. She's very happy. She generally wants to play. She likes to go outside. She loves walks again. She's a lot happier with her life. She means the world to us and we just want her to be happy and healthy. Although the biopsy is still pending, Ellie appears to be healthier and is ready to go home. You can finish off when you get home. That's where the IV catheter was, okay? And I can help you to the car. Ellie was doing a lot better. She had a good appetite. She was eating, drinking, no fever, no vomiting, and improving blood work. So, um, so we sent her home. There was the, the issue as to whether this may have been cancer. Um, so, you know, we'll be crossing our fingers that we're going to get a good biopsy report. But my feeling is 90, 95% sure that this is going to be something that goes on and resolves that this was an infectious issue and that by getting this infected gallbladder out, we have solved the problem. I was excited that it was just the gallbladder and that the good news was that we had um, heard that her liver was not compromised. So that was the biggest fear in my mind. So I slept a lot better last night, even though it is major surgery. But I'm going to be a good mommy and a good nurse and take her home and tend to her. She's going to be on some antibiotics and some pain meds and then just bring her back in in two to three days, and then she has to have her stitches taken out in about two weeks. I'm thankful she's still here, and I think we're gonna be a-okay. -A